Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Code with Things by Varsha. Today we want to talk about this lead code medium question, min stack. So these are the companies in which this question has already been asked. So what do we need to do as part of this question is we have to design a stack which supports push, pop, top, and retrieving the minimum element in the constant time. And this is how we have to design the class and we have to add the code for the bunch of different methods, push, pop, top, and get min. So the core idea of this question lies in us being able to get the minimum element from the stack and the time complexity should be constant. So that is what we need to do for this question. Um, these methods pop, top, get min will always be called on non-empty stacks. Okay, so that's just an FYI. Uh, we have already started doing questions on stacks and queues. The playlist link is available in the description. So you can check that out. So we'll quickly go through this particular example and take this as a point of reference. So here is the explanation. First, we push minus two into the stack. Then we push zero and minus three. When we call get min, we are returned minus three, which is anyway the top. Then we pop it. So we remove minus three. So I'm assuming you're going to have a basic understanding of how push, pop, top behaves in a stack. Uh, so we have removed minus three. Now, when we do a top, we will get zero. Great. Now, when we do a get min, we are going to be returned minus two. So this is the example that we are also going to follow. So moving to the whiteboard, see if we have a stack like this, what is the main construct behind this? The get min. How do we do the get min? So I have one being pushed. I have two being pushed. I have, let's say, minus one being pushed. And uh, I have, let's say, five being pushed. So these are the numbers. Now, why get min is tricky? Because when you pop something from an element or if you peek at the certain top element, you have no way to uh, uh, figure out which whether it is a min value or it is not a min value just by seeing the top element. So just by using one single stack, it is not very easy to figure out if we will be able to get the minimum element. So whenever we are trying to push any element to the stack, what is the basis? Like what is the usual thought process we'll have? Whenever we are trying to push something to the stack, during that time only we have to decide whether it is a minimum element or it is not on a minimum element. So since while pushing, we have to decide whether it is a min, uh, it is a minimum element or not. So that is why we would need another stack as an interme intermediate or a temporary stack, we can call it as the main stack and we can call this as the main stack, right? So what we will do is we'll now start implementing our methods. When we are trying to push, we have to see whether our main stack is empty or not. Is the main stack empty or not? Because if it is empty, we have to at least add our first element into it. So we see that it is empty. So we added it. Okay. So is main stack empty or we have to see whether the element that is that is what you are the one which you are adding going to push to this main stack whether that current uh, okay let's say that element of where whatever that particular element is it lesser than the element that you already have in your main stack we can do main stack dot peak because if I get an element which is already smaller than something I already have in my main stack let me repeat main stack is the point of reference for storing the minimum elements if I get a value which is smaller than the one I already have in the main stack, I will definitely want to push it into my stack. So if this condition is true, then I will push into my main stack. Otherwise, I will anyway have to push it into my main stack. Main stack, I will be pushing anyhow. But when I will push to main stack is the decision I have to make based on this condition. When it is empty, either when it is empty or when the current element is lesser than what we already have. So now let's try to push the elements into our min stack also. Let's complete this iteration. So we have pushed one already. Next two is coming. So two we have pushed into main stack already. Now is two less than one? No, it is not. So we'll not push in main stack. Next coming to minus one. Minus one is pushed into my uh, main stack. Is minus one less than one? Yes, it is. Now we will push minus one into it. Next five we have added into main stack. Now is five less than minus one? No, it is not. So in this way, our min stack is ready and our main stack is also ready. Now let's do the pop operation. So what we have to do, pop operation, anyway, you have to pop up, pop out the element that you have at the top of the main stack. So if I do a pop operation, I will anyway have to remove five. But one more thing which we have to be careful about, it is not just removing the element from the main stack. It might also involve removing the unnecessary element from the main stack. 
when you of course would not want to remove something which is the minimum element so you have to check whether the element which you are removing from the main stack is equal to the element that you have at the main stack if it is no point in having it in the main stack also but since now 5 and minus 1 are not same so that is why we are going to remove it from the main stack so if they are same so let's do this what we will do is pop means we will do main stack dot pop and we will also check if the element that we are removing is it equal equal to the min stack dot peak if it is then remove it from the min stack also then min stack dot pop also so two pop operation we have to do based on the condition okay now see this now the pop operation of this has happened so five is gone out of the picture now this is what we have in our main stack and min stack again i want to do a pop operation now see this carefully now minus one is the next candidate which has to be removed so i will remove minus one from main, main stack now this question now this condition is true that minus one and minus one are equal so it has to be also removed from the min stack otherwise if it stays in the min stack it will incorrectly return me the get min method I mean the get min method which will return the minimum element because minus one is not there in the main stack itself. If the element is not there in the main stack, how can it become the minimum element? So that is why when I remove from main stack, I also have to remove it from the min stack. Then whatever I'm left in the min stack will be my minimum element, right? So this is how your pop operation has to be. Moving to the next operation, what we have the top operation. Top is what the top of the main stack, of course. You just have to return main stack dot peak. Whatever you have at the top, that will be returned. And finally, the important operation get min. This is very predictable now because we have done the dry run. So now, when you do the top operation, and now when you call the get min, on which stack it should be called? Of course, on the min stack. And what will we will return? We will return min stack dot peak. So whatever remains in the min stack is being returned by the get min method. So actually, if you see the get min method is very simple. It just has to return what you have at the top of the min stack. But just to get the right value on the top of the min stack is the actual catch of this problem, which is being solved in the push and the pop operations mainly. If these two operations are not done correctly, your get min will return your wrong result. So that is all about this particular question, the min stack, where we have covered push, pop, top, and get min operation. Code is available in the GitHub, so please check out the description. Do practice it on lead code as well. So thank you so much for watching this video.